Welcome back, everyone. We are here today with our Wellness and Weight Loss Wednesday show of the week. Our topic of the day is too much REM sleep an issue. Why this show came up is because we've been doing a bunch of shows on sleep hygiene and overall sleep health. And this is one of those topics that no matter what your goal, whether it be wellness, weight loss, weight gain, longevity, biohacking, anti-aging, you have to get your sleep, right? It's one of those things that, yes, you want to work on nutrition, you want to work on your overall hormones and your detox, but if you're not getting sleep right, like even when we talk about yesterday's uh, or tomorrow's show, actually, we're going to be talking about this as drainage. If you are not getting enough sleep at night, you are not going to be doing a great job detoxifying your body. So really, sleep is a cornerstone. It's a pillar of good health. But what happens if you get too much of something? I'm not talking about more than like, we know, and again, I've given you shows before, the time that you should be in bed sleeping is about seven to nine hours, okay? I give you how much each person needs. Definitely check out, why don't I do this? I'll make it much, much easier. Head on over to stephencabral.com forward slash 2336. I'm going to give you my top three takeaways for today and also other shows to listen to after this that's going to make a lot more sense of how to get more deep sleep, how to get more REM sleep. And I'll talk about uh, the other shows that I link up as well. But just crucial that you're getting enough sleep. But what happens if you're someone that when you wake up in the morning, you're getting brain fog or grogginess or you have more uh, let's say poor concentration or poor memory or lower mood, or you're feeling just overall more overwhelmed and stressed about life. It is possible that you're getting too much REM, even if you're only getting eight hours of sleep. I want to explain why that may happen, what it is, and then we can go about fixing it. Because again, when I talk about, well, well let's just do a refresher. So if you haven't listened to any of the previous shows, that's okay. So REM sleep is on a four sleep stage model, it's stage number four. It's the last part of sleep, okay? Now, on a five-stage model, the first stage is you in between wakefulness and falling to sleep. we kind of moving from the alpha all the way down. Brain waves are lowering to, uh, well, we can get all the way down to theta. But so what I want to share with you, though, is regardless of how you look at it, this is the last stage of sleep. So this last stage of sleep, you've already gone through, it's called non-REM sleep, okay? So we have two stages of light sleep, all right? So let's call it stage uh, on a, let's just go with a four-stage system. I'll link up my five-stage for you to get a little bit more in depth. The first two are light sleep, all right? So it's just body's calming its heart rate, body's cooling down, it's moving into sleep, then we hit deep sleep. And I want you just as an overall thought process, think of deep sleep as deeply restorative for your body. All right. So just think of it deeply restorative, rejuvenating for the body, detoxifying, however you want to look at it, rebuilding. It's a good way to think of deep sleep. Now, let's think of REM sleep as the same thing that deep sleep does for your body. REM sleep is doing for your brain. All right. But your body functions differently. So in this last stage, stage four, we'll call it, your body is now moving from which was lower heart rate, more natural rhythmic breathing. That's why you're able to track these things with a sleep monitor to now a slightly higher heart rate. The body mimics more of what it's like at when it's awake, but you're asleep. It, you do lose muscle tone though. So it's, it's not quite paralysis, but your body is more lymph and there's different theories on why that is, but you're so close to wakefulness. It's easier to wake you up at this moment. But what's happening is your brain is going through more of those processes. So what it's doing is it's actually activating that amygdala and the amygdala is not being activated during the other terms of time of sleep. Um, I would say maybe even just the opposite. You're turning it off to get more restorative and relaxation and more of the parasympathetic for the actual body to just do some deep healing. But with the REM sleep, the brain is on. Okay. So think of it as you've gone through the day and you've learned some things and you have a lot of memories and you have a lot of thoughts and now you need to process those. The REM sleep is allowing you to process all of that. It's like, it's taking all of these documents. I've got all of these sheets all over my desk here, right? All my research papers. And it's taking all of those papers and it's filing them into folders inside of your filing drawers. That's the best way that I, analogy that I've ever thought of to try to explain REM sleep. And I'm sure I'm not the first person to say it that way as well. 
So what's happening is your brain is very active saying, okay, we learned this today. We're worried about this. We're thinking about this. This is a goal we set. Oh, we met this person. Oh, I need to do this tomorrow. All of those things are activated. You're shuffling all the papers. You're putting them in the right folders. And so the brain is quite active. But we have to understand is that that's not always a good thing. Meaning that we want some of that. There's no doubt about it. But what happens if you go over your 20 to 25% of REM-based sleep? All right, so let's, again, we'll take one more step back. So when you're looking at deep sleep, you want right around, there's all sorts of different numbers. I typically just say 10 to 20%, ideally 20% of your sleep should be uh, deep sleep, okay? Closer to 20%, that's ideal. So if you're sleeping eight hours per night, 25% would be uh, two hours, right? So 20% is going to be close to that 90 minutes. So for deep sleep, you want to be at about 90 minutes. Two hours is phenomenal uh, at eight hours of sleep because deep sleep, you can always get more of. There's, you know, there's reasons why you might be getting more and more deep sleep, but if you can get 90 minutes, phenomenal. That's, that's what you want for sure. No doubt about it. Use your favorite sleep tracker, right? I mean, I've mentioned all the brands in the past. You can use Oura Ring. You can use Whoop Strap. You can use Apple Watch to a degree. Um, you can use BioStrap. So there's all sorts of great ones that you can use. I, I, to me, use whatever you like. Totally up to you. Um, I've used the Oura Ring for a long time. I like the BioStrap. I think it's great. Apple Watch is going to get there. I think in the future, it will be even better. Um, all sorts of great. Uh, Whoop will work. There's all sorts of great ones, okay? But you decide how you want to track. And all my trackers that I use are at stephencabral.com forward slash resources. That's just everything that I use in my life uh, in our practice. So I'll tell you this though, that's, that's deep sleep. REM sleep should be about 20 to 25%. So higher than deep sleep. Let's say deep sleep is technically like 13% to 20% of your sleep. All right. So your REM sleep, is about 20 to 25%, ideally 25%. You want to be in the higher end, okay? It's going to be more restorative for your body. But it doesn't mean that you would necessarily want to go over. So let's, let's take this a step back. If you're getting eight hours of sleep, that means you should be getting two hours of REM sleep per night. That's the ideal amount. What happens if you're getting too little? Not enough REM sleep can be your body not getting enough of that deep parasympathetic state to actually calm the body in the first place. The second is you may have drank alcohol, right? There's other things that you could use as well, but even maybe even eating too close to bed, but alcohol or a lot of sedatives, sleep ba sleeping based medication, not, not nutritional supplements that are natural, but sleep based medication can actually push you out of REM sleep. It's been said that alcohol is the great uh, crusher of deep sleep and REM sleep. And I find that to be the truth. It affects my deep sleep more than it does my REM sleep. That's why, again, I don't drink alcohol that much anymore. Whether I enjoy having a drink or two with friends, sure. But honestly, it really throws off my sleep which leads to then more inflammation, not the same levels of energy the next day. And that's why for me, like it has to be a really special occasion uh, if I'm going to have a drink you know, with friends because I can still enjoy my time with friends and not have to have alcohol. But again, that's your choice. I'm not here to tell you what choices to make in life. I just want to present to you the actual science, the information and, and how it affects us in everyday life. Uh, every once in a while, anything you do, probably not that big a deal. You start to do it multiple times per week, okay, it becomes a real issue. There's no doubt about that. It just ends up filling up that rain barrel over time, and then there it is. That, that's when our genetics manifest themselves. So that's if you get too little REM, you don't have enough of that restorative time for your brain, which can end up as what? Well, it can end up as brain fog, the grogginess, the poor concentration, the low mood, feeling over, overwhelmed, stressed, poor concentration overall. So just keep that in mind. It's one of the reasons why also when we're infants and, and we're young children, we get even more REM sleep. And we get even more REM sleep, one, is because hopefully we're in bed longer because, again, we're getting 25% of our sleep uh, hopefully when we're in bed. But also what we're doing is we're really taking in the entire outside world. We're in more of that theta state. So we're literally just taking everything in because we can't focus on everything. We just, as children, have to take in our outside world. And that's why it's not, you know, what they uh, hear you say. It's what they see you do. It, that's the truth with children. Like they're taking in what they actually see rather than just like, oh, this is the way that it is. Well, maybe, but I see the way that it is in the world. So that's, and that's part of that amygdala. So that's really important that we focus on that, that we understand that. So the, the topic of the podcast though is what happens if you get too much, right? Too much REM. Well, 
It's an indicator. It's a big indicator that something's off in your life. And typically, it's a sign of stress. If you're routinely getting three hours of REM sleep or more, well, there can be a couple of things. One, you might be in bed for 10 hours. Okay, it's probably a little bit too much sleep. If you're recovering from something like Addison's disease, like I was, or you know, chronic fatigue or some major issue, okay, there's a time and place for like three or four months to get more and more sleep for recovery. There's no doubt about that. Okay, so I don't disagree with that. That's why there's a time and place for basically everything. But studies, multiple studies show now less than seven hours, not good for glucose, for hormones, et cetera. More than nine hours, same, not ideal. So if you're sleeping seven to nine hours and you're getting more than three hours of REM sleep per night, it is a sign that there is a major stressor in your life. And maybe you already know that, okay? Maybe you already know that. But some of the more natural ones could be uh, you're training as an athlete. Uh, you may be pregnant. Uh, you might be nursing. Like that, that can be another one. So you have to keep in mind that there are natural stressors that are not necessarily off or bad. But the ones that are mental, emotional, physical pain, uh, overstressed at work or relationships, anything like that, and then you're taking that into your sleep, you can see it. And it means what? It means that your brain is overactive at night, dealing with the emotional stressors of the day. So never discount that. And that's why I like to do these shows from multiple different angles, because a lot of people would say, oh, no, the more deep, the better, the more REM, the better. But that's just not necessarily true. It's not, not unless you're in bed for a longer period of time where it's making up a normal 20 to 25% for that REM sleep. So I would just ask you this, is there a stressor that you know of in your life? And if not, then it's not probably mental, emotional. It very well, it very well, it, there could be trauma. There could be um, suppressed trauma. There's no doubt about it. But it could be gut-based. Like it could be inflammatory-based. It might be autoimmune-based. So it's something to look at. And the other part of it is this. If you are someone that wakes up routinely early, like early in the morning. That's why I worry about these people who say, I wake up at 4 a.m. to really get after it during the day. Okay, listen, like I, I was there myself. I used to wake up at 4 a.m. back in the day too. So I totally get it. But over time, that may not be the best thing to do. And the reason is that your REM sleep is typically in the second half of your night. Now, can, you can say to yourself, and I do have clients that go to bed at 8 a.m. and they wake up at 4. Okay, so your body could adjust to that. There's no doubt about it. And the last four to five hours of the night is more of that REM sleep. You typically get three to five REM cycles per night. So you don't like just get a block of, you know, two hours. You get maybe like 20, 30 minutes at a time and you're, you're moving through that block. So... It's fine to rearrange your sleep schedule if you want to wake up earlier, fine. I don't usually recommend people get up before 4, 30, 5 o'clock in the morning because it starts to throw you out of a normal circadian rhythm. But let's save that topic for another day, and we'll talk about how um, the cortisol awakening response and thyroid work around um, 3 in the morning to about 6 in the morning. So we'll, we'll talk about that another day. So stay tuned for that show. But what I'll say is this. If you are someone that is waking up earlier, not necessarily on purpose, but you're literally waking up earlier, and you find yourself starting to get REM sleep, like within the first couple hours of going to bed, if you're tracking your sleep, it's a sign too that you woke up too early or you didn't get enough REM sleep the night before because your body will prioritize that. It's very interesting. So your body will throw you into REM sleep. And again, I have I've, uh, wellness clients that ask this all the time. I get very little deep sleep, but I get three hours of REM. All right, in my opinion, that is someone that has a lot of stress on their body or on their mind, and their body is preferentially saying, listen, we need to be able to work through these things in the brain before we even restore the body. Well, that's not necessarily a good thing in the long run. Sure, it helps your brain in the short term, but what about in the long term, right? What about these things like dementia or Alzheimer's or anything to do with the nervous system, the neurological system, right? We talk about Parkinson's disease. We talk about MS. We talk about just Again, how the nervous system affects the endocrine system, which is your hormones, which then affects your immune system. So there's a downstream effect to all of these things in life, which is why, again, take care of the things that you can, the food you put in your mouth, the way you move your body, your overall stress, your toxin removal, um, your sleep, your emotions, the supplements you're taking, and your overall mindset, right? That's my de-stress protocol that I've been using now for 20 years. And, and it's, it's, these are the big blocks. These are the big rocks that I talk about. They're the things that make up your overall life and your health. So bottom line is this. If you find yourself getting more than three hours of REM sleep per night and you're, and you're not getting more than necessarily eight to nine hours of sleep per night, I think there's an issue that you need to address. And I would 
begin to work on the things that are going to calm your central nervous system. So I have lots of shows on those and the adrenals and calming the body, but you need to look at things like binaural beats, like meditation, getting to bed earlier, things that aren't overly stimulating to the body, don't work out too hard, don't overstress yourself in any way. Um, things like even full spectrum magnesium, adrenal soothe, um, you know, the deep the sleep help protocol, like all these things can be helpful. But you also want to look at besides the nutritional supplements, the lifestyle based adjustments, like giving yourself just gentle self uh, massage, doing things even like some gentle foam rolling or massaging the soles of your feet, putting on again the, the binaural beats, uh, all of these things to be healthy, doing breath work. All, these things are crucial. So all of them add up. I don't want to tell you exactly what to do for you, but I want you to know how to assess these things because too much is never a good thing. Too little is never a good thing. It is always about balance. It's not about moderation. I don't even, nobody even knows what that means, right? Because having a drink, an alcoholic drink every single day is what people call moderation. That is certainly not healthy for the body. That's like irrefutable now. So what I want to share with you is this. It's about balance. It's bringing your body back into balance, seeing how you do, starting to track your biometrics, starting to do some at-home lab testing, find out what's right for your body. Don't listen to anybody else's body. Don't listen to anybody else saying, oh, this is what you need to be doing. You need to be drinking this special mushroom tea. And again, I'm not against mushroom teas, but like, I don't know. I don't just don't think that the mushroom tea is going to change your life. I want you to look at what you need for your body and start to then add the things that you know will be the big rocks in your own life to help rebalance your central nervous system as well. So hopefully this is helpful. If I left anything out, if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments. Always happy to help. Thank you so much. And as always, if the show was helpful, please do feel free to share it with anybody else you believe it could serve. 